Hey, hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Hello, AJ. Thank you for moderating this stream again. How are you doing? <laughs> now I asked. I promised I would not, but I, I still did it. I assume you're doing you're doing great, and so am I. And uh, the stream today will be about a train that is called the Networker, the British railway class 465 that used to be a uh, standalone DLC, locomotive DLC in the Trains in World 2 game. And oh, I'm confusing myself because I had a look at a different DLC and is now not longer a standalone locomotive DLC but integrated in the new Southeastern High Speed Extended. This little train is what I'm talking about. We have the subclass slash 9. We will look at what this means. I can already turn on the DLC and the service markers so that I don't forget it later. The service that we are going to start this stream with is a service that starts in Faversham and is going I think up to yeah question again is it called Roster Rochester at least this is where we are going today the train started in Dover Priory what is not in the route not represented in the route mm. I wanted to have some clouds because it is already autumn. Mm. Yeah, but the first represented station on this service is Faversham. So we're starting in Faversham just, just as we did in the Javelin stream. And uh, yeah, we will see how different it looks from this train. So, this is the inside of our class 465 networker. We can look at it from the outside. You can see it has a southeastern livery, sometimes called the Go Via livery. To activate it, we have a master key. We have, like always, a reverser that will be set in neutral so that we can open the doors. And we have door controls. I think only the old release button works on this train so far and then we can load passengers. You can see that the light configuration is not as it is supposed to be when you start a service on this train. On the back it is good because we have the red marker lights at the back but we also have the red marker lights at the front so we need to turn them off and then turn on the headlights for day running or night running whatever you are doing. The safety systems need to be turned on and in this stream I actually want to have a closer look on those safety systems because they are now in this DLC represented properly. Not only the AWS, what we always know or what we knew before, you know that is the thing that makes those sounds when you pass the magnets in front of signals but also the DSD system, the Vigilance system, the DRA system that we do not need to turn on here on this train. We will have a look at the cruise control that the networker train has and what they always like to turn on on this train because it makes braking nicer is the regenerative braking. So by default regenerative braking is turned off but I want to turn it on because it actually brakes nicer then and um, you need it for using the cruise control doors are closed train can start When you start the train, it's picking up its power from the third rail, so it is a direct current train. 
for notches for the power I always tend to use the second notch quite early third notch at about 15 miles and the fourth somewhere north of 30 miles we are limited to 60 at the station now we are out of the 60 and or 75 and this train has a maximum speed of 75 so we cannot actually go line speed on most parts here between Fedashem and Gillingham what you hear heard here it was the alarm for the vigilance system this alarm beep 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 can be vigilance system or it can be or it can be the DSD system again we will have a closer look on those two systems very soon so let me read what, what AJ asked what I've always wondered how long can trains be disconnected from a third rail before it interrupts the power because sometimes I see the third rail switch and it doesn't sound like a continued connection. Okay, actually, the shoe that picks up the power from the third rail, as soon as it is disconnected, as soon as it loses physical contact, it cannot pick up any more power from the third rail. But, oh, unfortunately, I opened the door by mistake. I just wanted to close the window okay <laughs> door please close window close because it was too loud here yeah what I wanted to explain as soon as this shoe loses contact with the third rail then there is no power anymore you can see it in this light here if it goes dark this indicator then you lost the connection to the grid and then you are not picking up power but sometimes trains do not only have this one shoe but they have more than one shoe so they can pick up the power at different spots not all trains have that but some trains have that so if one shoe loses the connection then at least the other shoe still has the connection and can pick up power and if both both shoes lose the connection then obviously the inertia of the train uh, just lets the train coast across the gap in the third rail so this is why you usually do not have any problems and then sometimes when you see the third rail switching there is a certain overlap where you have the third rail on both sides so that uh, you don't lose the connection does this answer the question AJ? the shoe is on both sides yes when we are stopping at the station I will try to show it it is actually you can see it and you can see it being lowered and you can see it being uh, retracted if it is not used what I wanted to demonstrate on this first part uh, not only the steam engine that we have here did you all see the steam engine Yeah, they are having a rail tour here. So we got the steam engine. What I wanted to start with actually is to demonstrate that the DST system and the vigilance system are now installed correctly. 
and starting with the DSD system that is the driver safety device and it is connected with this paddle here a paddle that is usually depressed when you're sitting down and if you click on it then you release it and when you're not sitting down then it is released and if you click on it then you press it what is what is really greatly implemented this if you're sitting down it is pressed and if you click it it gets released and pressed again and if you're standing up it is the other way around after all stop at sitting born because I have to prepare for that I will demonstrate what happens if you stand up while driving the train? Well first I have to slow down for the stop at sitting bourne. Actually on brake notch 1 the train is already slowing down quite nicely. So if you start slowing down early enough then you do not need to brake harder than on notch 1 usually. You can uh, hear the relays. When you switch the braking and traction notches, that is the gangway where people sometimes tend to get their feet through the ground. You can see this train has this door closed light just as the javelin has it. It is white when the doors are open and goes dark as soon as the doors are closed. So getting this the train to cruise speed I think we have yeah well we have a bit until we have to slow down to 70 but this allows us to have a first look on the implemented um, security systems and the first one is the the DSD that has its own isolation uh, isolation switch here and what the DSD is for is to check if the driver is present more or less that is what the DSD switch is trying to do and for that you have to stand on this pedal so when you're sitting down and pressing this pedal then usually the DSD system is happy whereas now we're getting to the 70 no it's still the 90 but later we are going to the 70 I just let the train coast a bit and stand up and what happens we are getting alarm because the pedal is not pressed as soon as you press the pedal it stops as soon as you let it go again it starts sounding an alarm this is the DSD system and if you fail to press the pedal again within a certain amount of time while the alarm is going off then the train will apply a penalty break and it will send an emergency call to the dispatcher. So that is the idea about making sure that the driver is present in the cab and not walking around or having a cigarette or chatting up the ladies in the passenger compartment but is actually in his seat. 
but obviously there can still be a situation where a driver collapses for example and uh, slumps on the controls and obviously still holds down the pedal but is inactive because he is unconscious for example. For that we have the vigilance system has its own switch as well, vigilance, isolation and the vigilance system checks whether the driver is operating any controls and if the driver is not operating any controls, I just let the train, the train coast for a bit and not operating the brake, not operating the traction control, not operating the horn after a specified amount of time, I think it's 60 or 90 seconds or something like this the vigilance alarm will start sounding. I'm getting docked for overspeeding because I said I won't touch the brakes. I will not touch the brakes. So I accept getting docked. This is the vigilance alarm. And for satisfying the vigilance alarm, you have to let go of the pedal and depress it again. So this is the idea to make sure that the driver is actually alive, that he is active, that he is doing stuff. Th so he is either operating the controls or he is able to release the paddle and press it again. So if you hear that, release the paddle and press it again to satisfy this alarm. Otherwise you will get a penalty break. So these two systems work hand in hand, but they are two different systems and uh, the alarm is the same, the consequences are more or less the same, but they have two different isolation switches and two different modes to um, satisfy them. And the third system in this in this row more or less then is the AWS system. What we all know, what we just heard, the bing from a green signal and the burp from a yellow or red signal. This is the system that warns the driver if he is approaching a signal that is not clear. And Obviously we all know what we have to do if we get a burp from the AWS. We have to press this button, AWS, acknowledge. Then the system is happy and as far as the AWS system is concerned, nothing will happen. If you fail to press the AWS button, then you get a penalty break because a penalty break is usually the reaction of the train if the train can't be sure that the driver is there and active and reactive and doing his job. So, as always when we're stopping at Rainham, it started raining And at this point, to summarize what we just talked about, a very, very short presentation today. What systems do we have on a British train usually? And what we have on this class for a 65 and up worker? We have a system that checks if the driver is present. We have a system that checks if the driver is active. We have a system that checks if the driver is reacting to input that is coming from the track like a magnet in front of a red signal and we have a system, we have not talked about this, we, we will see that later in the game, that reminds the driver of a signal at the danger in front of him, so lest he forgets this. The system that checks if the driver is present is the driver safety device, the DSD. That is the one where you have to keep the pedal pressed 
and sometimes especially when you're shunting and you have to stand up and look out of the window or be in a different place where you cannot press down the pedal some trains and locomotive have a hold over switch that you can press instead of the pedal that is then usually close to the window where you have to look out while performing your shunting missions so either pressing the pedal or the switch will keep the driver safety device happy if the pedal is not pressed and the switch is not pressed and the train um, the reverse is set to forward or reverse not in neutral then the train will sound an alarm obviously if you want to stand up at a station or whatever then you have to put the reverser into neutral then you won't get an alarm if the pedal is not pressed and if you do not press the pedal again or if you do not press the holdover switch again then you will get the penalty brake and the system will inform the uh, dispatcher via the GSMR radio that is on the train and will call for help because the train then assumes that the driver is um, incapacitated fell off uh, his seat or fell off the train or whatever the vigilance device checks if the driver is active if he is not only there but also ac uh, also active and for that it checks if the driver is operating controls so if the driver is operating controls traction brake horn sometimes it is happy and won't do anything if the driver does not operate any controls within a specified amount of time like 30 or no not 30 i think it's more in 60 or 90 seconds might actually be uh, depending on the train that you're driving then it will sound an alarm and then you have to release and press the pedal again obviously pressing alone won't help because you still don't know if the driver driver might be unconscious and just uh, being slumped in to the front and pressing the pedal so he has to release it and press it again on some trains it is enough to operate controls again uh, on the network here that we are driving it is uh, necessary to release and press the pedal again um, you get an alarm if this uh, specified length of time has run out and uh, then you have to release and press the pedal then the alarm goes off if you don't do that again in a specified length of time you get the penalty break and the train stops we have seen this on the uh, electro star stream when i was uh, trying to switch around stuff on my um, streaming equipment and wasn't in the game and could not press the paddle uh, fast enough then you get the penalty break but you can recover from this penalty break uh, quite easily and go on the very famous AWS system checks if the driver is reacting to input this is when you are passing a magnet in front of a yellow or red signal then you will not hear the bell sound but the horn sound and you have to acknowledge it by pushing the AWS acknowledge button otherwise you will get the penalty break if you do so the sunflower will come on and the sunflower is one system that reminds the driver that a signal at danger is in front of the train so he has to be ca careful so even if the driver forgets that he just acknowledged the uh, button here uh, the the buzzer from the horn from the AWS system he still can look at the sunflower and if the sunflower is like this not black but like this then he can see oops I am approaching a signal at danger and as soon as the signal is clear and he is passing a magnet in front of a green signal and gets the bell sound again then the sunflower will go dark again another system that reminds the driver of a signal uh, at a danger ahead is the driver's reminder appliance this is a quite simple device that usually has a button or something that can be set and unset and it needs to be set by the driver himself and regulations require the driver to set this button every time when he stops at a red signal stables the train leaves the train stops at the station at the red signal so in any case that whatever the driver is doing in the meantime until he restarts his train he gets reminded by this appliance that there was a red signal when he stopped and uh, then he has to unset the button again and then he can go and uh, as long as the button is set the traction will be locked so he cannot apply any power 
So this is a very, very simplified, let's say, in-cap signaling, because as soon as you set the DRA device, it will show a red light and reminds the driver that there was a red light when he stopped in the first place and then he can look at the signal and if it has cleared then he can unset the button and drive on if it is still red obviously then he might have to just wait for the signal to change so those four um, uh, safety systems are typically in every british train um, they are now actually uh, implemented in the game in the south uh, uh, eastern high speed extended DLC, at least on the, the trains that I checked. The DSD was not implemented on London computer as far as I could see it. The vigilance was, the AWS obviously too, and the driver reminder appliance too, but now all of the four. The AWS, we all know that, is typically paired with the TPWS system that more or less integrates the AWS system on a lot of trains. On some trains you have different isolation isolation switches for both systems. But I will I want to talk about the TPWS system uh, in a different stream because it is a system that in my opinion is more or less working on the passive side. It is actually controlling speed when you approach a red signal and stops a train if he runs a red signal there is nothing more than the driver has to operate he also has to operate obviously the acknowledge button for the magnets that d go ding or b uh, boop and um, sometimes this is integrated in this system but we will probably look at this system in a, in a different stream and <coughs> if you count the TPWS system as um, as, as a separate system and uh, think back on the Javelin stream where we had the French KVB system and the in-cap signaling system, the TVM430 system, then on a train like the Javelin you have those four, the TPWS, uh, that is five, and the KVB and the TVM, seven safety systems that run on one train altogether and uh, now we know which one does which and we can go back to our train What I actually did to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more challenging, usually this paddle here and the AWS acknowledge button. If you look on your default settings for the keyboard controls, you find it here alerter, DSD, reset, that is the paddle, and AWS reset. They have actually two different entries for the uh, controls but they are by default both linked with the Q key meaning that when you press the Q key you're always operating both buttons and I uh, put the caps lock key to the DSD reset to actually be able to operate the AWS button and the pedal um, independently from each other so that I actually have to hit the correct key uh, for the for the correct alarm. That makes it a bit more interesting, and you can separate the systems better in your head. This is the button for the DRA that we talked about. You set it, then it is red, and the traction is locked. You unset it, and then it is no longer red and you can apply traction. Oops. If you, like I just did, move the reverser by mistake from the neutral setting that I usually have when I'm 
stationary at the station to the forward setting and you move it too far you put it into off and then put it back into the forward setting then always the AWS self-test program will come on again and you will hear the AWS alarm and you have to press the AWS reset button again So, on our way to Gillingham, I can maybe say one or two words about the history of this train. As you can see, it is a 465-9, the subclass 9, tells us a bit about the history of this train. That was the alarm for the vigilance. At first, I pressed the AWS by mistake and then the other key that is connected with the pedal. Those trains were originally built in the late 80s and uh, entered service in the early 90s. The, the story about them is that they were not built by one single manufacturer but by that was the AWS for the 60 reduction that is incoming, Morpeth board. You know that Morpeth boards can also be armed with an AWS magnet. Yeah, the train was not uh, built by one single manufacturer, but actually there were two batches of those trains that were built by two different manufacturers ending up in two subclasses, the 465 slash 1 and the 465 slash 2. They were almost identical except for some minor things like air winds above the the windows and uh, trains have been refurbished later in the early 2000s the 465-2 line got a um, major refurbishment and ended up as the 465-9 line that we are driving here. So this is the m most modern subclass that there is of this kind of train. And starting in 2016, as you can read in the press, Uh, those trains got even more refurbished and if you look at the model as it is represented in the game you can see that it has uh, fully accessible toilets for example and space for wheelchairs so that it complies with accessibility regulations what tells us that the train that we are driving here is already a refurbished one so refurbished in the air era starting at 2016 we have a bit of time here waiting at Gillingham I will use that to show you things that I just tried to explain like here in the train this is the interior after the refurbishment of 2016 and later you have these additional oh I cannot go there with the external camera no problem we will enter through a different door you have this tactile floor <coughs> If you are blind and using a stick that you can feel on the floor that this is the way where you can leave the train, where you can get off it. You have more handrails. <coughs> Excuse me. And somewhere you can actually see that there are fully accessible toilets in the train. It has a first class didn't have a first class 
before 2005, I think. <coughs> Excuse me again. You can see that we are running in double traction actually. Networkers have always four cars, but you can run them as eight car trains obviously if you connect two of them to a double traction unit. So where is my fully accessible toilet? Not here. Ah, here it is. You can see those big toilets round and that shows us that it is a refurbished train and now I wanted to show you the shoe here. This is the shoe that is running on the third rail and picking up the power. And there might be a second shoe at the end of the train. Here, it is down as well. So we have two points where we can draw the power. And on the other side of the train, unfortunately I have no time to show that. Now <coughs> you have the same set of those two shoes. And if you're running a double traction you actually have four points, four shoes on either side. The livery that the train has in the game here is not the livery that it started its life with. I think the livery that it hired, or most of those trains had when they started, were, were network southeastern liveries. Maybe this is where the name Networker comes from. was too fast. At this signal there is a 50 restriction. That's This is actually a part of the track that I really love where you are running across this bridge and you have the houses and roofs of the houses and trees next to the track. Preparing for a 30 reduction before we get to Chatham. Tunnel again. And Chatham Station. <coughs> so Obviously the shoes on this side of the train, we cannot see them as easily because the platform is in the way, but you can see it here, right? Here is the shoe for the other side and here is the shoe for this side. So on both bogies you have those shoes. What you also can see on the bogies is those cables here that tell you that 
every axle here has an electronic anti-slip system, a wheel slips prevention system. It works in a way that there is a sensor here on this cap and it measures how fast every axle is traveling and if one axle is traveling faster than the rest of the train then this is an indication that this axle is slipping because it has lost contact to the rail and then the system will stop applying power to this axle until it got friction again. That is actually a quite elaborate system that is state of the art obviously in most trains and you can see that the train has it if you see those cables starting at the tip of the axle I will use the speed uh, the cruise control system now I will set it to 30 the trick to use it is actually to have the regenerate the the regenerative brake on and then you have to yank your power into P4 the speed the speed control or cruise control system only works if the regenerative braking is on if it is off it also works but then it will not slow down your train and if you put your power handle into uh, notch 4. This was the AWS with the boop. I had to acknowledge it with the AWS acknowledge because we're running up on a double yellow indicating that the second signal from here will be red. Since we are confined to 30 miles this is not really alarming. <coughs> Getting out of your cruise control is a bit tricky then because if you just go down to power notch 3 that was both. That was AWS for the yellow and the vigilance for not operating the controls at the same time I had to press both keys and I was just explaining if you want to get out of your um, cruise control again you cannot just switch down the power because then it will just run uh, that was obviously my bad the idea is to set the speed below first and then turn the power down and then you can turn off the speed and then you can take control manually because otherwise if you just reduce the power then you will accelerate beyond the speed that you set your cruise control system to if you set your cruise control system up instead of down obviously like I did by mistake then you are speeding again anyway so we've reached Roster or Rochester if anyone knows please tell me in the comments if this is pronounced Roster or Rochester or whatever so that I can use that in streams to come and this is already the last uh, station for our service here I think because now this train is going to London Victoria and um, this is how we did we are not getting a gold medal because I already got a gold medal for that here well I've done better I guess return to free roam I will just stay on the train and I uh, want to use that here sit on the second man seat what puts you in a <laughs> position that is a bit the view like a child or a dog but I can use the external cameras and I will just stay on the train a bit and see where the where the train is going I probably should turn off the security systems otherwise we will constantly get alarms and the AI drivers do not operate safety systems 
you can see if the safety systems are turned off then this lamp will light up in informing you that your safety systems are off and you know this part of the track because usually we're going across this bridge just just as the train is doing right now we are crossing the river here with the with the submarine submarine and on the other side the castle <coughs> and then we usually go to the right here and end up in Strud but the AI trains they don't go to Strud but straight ahead and this leads to a part of the track that is not represented in the game or not yet represented in the game unfortunately and that leads us to London Victoria directly if you stay on the AI train you can see that there is actually a lot of track and signals in this not represented or not used area well but the scenery obviously has not been worked to the end cars are flying in the air coming out of nowhere but the track is here so maybe in some future time we will get this DLC even more extended and I think it would be cool if you could go to London Victoria and go over to the London Commuter DLC that obviously starts at London Victoria. Here you can see there are signals and even contact signal or telephones but the scenery obviously is only rudimentary in this part of the DLC. I don't know how you feel about that, but I sometimes find it interesting to stay on the AI trains and see where those diverging lines might go to and where they might connect again to other DLCs and how far it is actually implemented. Not so much the scenery but at least the track and the signals and it can be used by an AI train here most often AI trains run for two or three seconds and then they are out and here there is actually a lot of track that the AI train can use here we have a nice road across the hill and bridges so it looks a bit like it had been in planning to connect more to this DLC here driver won't acknowledge the double yellow with the AWS don't worry that's why I turned it off But this is, I think, the end of the represented area, or at least soon enough we will end there. But still, we got signals here. So this route has been worked on. And now, this is the end of the world as we know it. Poof. Okay, now I can go back to the main menu. One more service, I think. It is, what did I prepare? The 1223 service. Just make sure that I got 
the Monica, right? London Victoria to Gravesend. So this is the opposite direction on a different part of the track. Again, our networker. What did I say? 1223. 1223, this. And this is actually the part of the track that has been um, added to the extended southeastern high speed. It wasn't there in the non extended version in Train Sim World 2. And so I think we should have a look at it. Ah, uh, again, like always, I forgot to turn on the snow. I wanted to have some snow to s to to show that this train actually has a sender. So out again and turning on the snow. So to the trains, choose a route, southeastern high speed timetable. Twelve twenty-three. And now don't forget to turn on the snow. Light snow. That is what I want. Or heavy snow? Snowstorm. No. Heavy snow is enough. AJ, are you still with me? That is good to hear. I think in this service we can actually see a use of the DRA application. Because we will have to stop most probably at the red signal. Okay, snow still has to fall. Master key on. Reverse it to neutral. Open the doors. This time on the other side. Activate the regenerative braking. It is called regenerative, by the way, because it is actually supposed to feed the energy that is drawn out of the train when it is slowed down with the dynamics brakes back into the third rail and so not lose the energy, but regenerate it so that it can be used for propelling the train when it is necessary again. This is more or less the opposite of rheostatic dynamic braking. I'm using the the speed control set it to 20 because I know that until we are out on the open track we are restricted to 20 on this track here. The regenerative braking is on and then I just accelerate the train until 5 miles under the set speed and then I am on notch 4 and then you can see that the train is actually sticking to the 20. The cruise control stuff works in my opinion quite nicely. You can totally use it if you're for those slower speeds like up to 30 or something. Above that it works as long as you are not going downhill or not too fast. If you are going too fast or downhill then you most probably overspeed a bit because then it is not fast enough to catch your speed. Or having said this actually I oversped with the cruise control a bit obviously well whatever now I'm pumping up the cruise control to 50 what makes our train accelerate to the 50 you can hear the vigilance alarm I have to use the paddle oh yeah I've got an achievement Before I actually reach the 50, 
I switch off the cruise control and uh, yeah regulate speed manually we are on a fast service here we only stop at green height for blue water that is a nice name as well green height for blue water yellow rim for red fire <laughs> don't know how they find names like this 70 we can accelerate as soon as the train has passed the sign the train has a sander it actually took me long to find where the sander is represented in the cab because it is hidden among the door control buttons for the left side it is here the black button here this is the sender here is the the control button for the guard buzzer if you actually have a guard on your train and not operating in driver only mode on the next station let's pretend we have a guard actually on board so now we're slowing down for green hive I break a bit more as usual because we are on the snow and because we are going downhill for a green height I think and the timetable totally allows it Do you like the snowy trees, AJ? Because now we actually have snow in the trees and it is day so that you can see them. Even though it stopped snowing more or less. Yeah. Okay, I take this as a yes. Wiper controls are here if you want to use them in the train model. Cab light is here if you want to use it in the train model. Here are the buttons for the hazard lights that are actually working for coupling and uncoupling. Here for the sender and for the guard signal that we will use just now. The TWPS, the TPWS panel is here in case you need the override button this is sometimes hard to find because it's here on, on, on the ceiling more or less train lights and train heating buttons are here so if you want to switch off the light for your passengers what does not work is the accelerometer accelerating rate and brake rate that should be displayed here. This does not work in this train. Here you have the gouges for the brake pipe on the right side and for the main reservoir on the left side. Closing the doors. And then if you want to play guard. And then we are ready to go. Usually if you have a guard on the train, then the guard would signal you that the train is ready for departure by hitting the bell twice, ding ding, and the driver would confirm it by hitting it twice too. So we before starting, you have this ding ding, ding ding sound.
the southeastern line that we are driving for today with our southeastern liveried train here is a bit special from a legal standpoint because at the moment as far as I can read it in the press it is more or less government operated because it is run by the Department of Transportation operator of last resort because until 2021 I think it was operated by a uh, Govia owned railroad carrier and then they had some difficulties explaining where a handful of millions of public money went to and this ended up in the Department of Transportation holding outfit taking over and operating this line now as an operator of last resort so that the trains actually go on running. Oh, am I speeding? There is a 70 limit on this line. That is the problem if you tell too many stories. Then you forget about the applicable speed limits. If you're familiar with the layout of this DLC, you just saw that we passed the high-speed part that connects London St. Pancras and uh, Ebbsfield, and I think this is where the junction to Ebbsfield comes in. No, this has already happened, because already the 30 reduction is announced. We had a double yellow, we are approaching a single yellow most probably, like here. Every time we have to acknowledge with the AWS button. And then we have to prepare for a red signal up front. Our route knowledge tells us that this signal is not immediately in front of us, so we don't have to slow down too much and we know that we will get a banner repeater at one of those bridges telling us about the status of the signal and now it is red and hopefully I did not break too late that would be... yeah yeah it was just okay Yeah. You can just like that see it, that th we stopped at the red signal. And this is a situation where you should apply your driver reminder appliance. Because if you're waiting now, doing something else, because you obviously have to wait in front of that signal, and then go back to your train and think, okay, I can drive again. And in the meantime, you might have forgotten that the signal turned red. And for that, you have to set the driver reminder appliance, reminding you that the signal that you stopped at was red and maybe is still. If you look at the signal closer, you can see that there is the part where you can set the two white dots allowing you to go for a shunting trip. This train is obviously the reason why we got the red signal, because it had to leave Gravesend. It 
so soon enough the signal should turn probably not to green but at least to yellow and we can go on and to be able to go on we have to unset our driver reminder application and then try get the train moving again the cruise control because we are going across a switch that allows only 20 oh that was a nice wheel slip did you see that that is the problem if you apply the cruise control system and power notch 4 in snowy conditions then the wheels can slip but the system caught it nicely stopped the power that was applied to this truck or bogey and the wheels got traction again this is the vigilance cruise control system was probably not able to get the speed below the 15 before entering the platform So if we get another set of points for our driving speed, yeah, I'm okay. Thank you, AJ. I just have to cough a bit because I did not get any water on my table, and from explaining too much, talking too much, I sometimes get a dry throat. So, we are at platform zero in Gravesend. You can see it here, it is the platform that is fenced off. This is the track where you usually go with your javelin across. And uh, this fenced off area is for the trains that go to London Victoria on the side lane. those impressions from Gravend Station, I think I will end the stream. That was obviously not the greatest performance in train driving. But at least I explained something about the operator of the last resort. What is an interesting thing, I think at the moment they are operating three lines or companies as an operator of last resort directly by the government more or less very interesting if you think about train carrier privatization or running them as government owned businesses last thing kudos to whoever made this snow graphics in train sim world 3 because this is just great that you don't have a line where snow ends and no snow starts but where you have actually an area where it mingles perfect yeah that was the stream for today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for moderating it, AJ. And uh, most probably I will be on again on next Thursday. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.